In a previous video, we've created this inserts new record test uh, and two trades, book, store, and model data, in order for us to be able to insert new record. And if we click on this add book method, you'll see that we are using this insert method on the database object. We obviously don't have this insert method yet, so let's close this trade, let's go to our database file, and after the statement, we are going to create a new public method called insert. So public function insert and it will take two arguments first one will be the name of the table so table and the second one will be of the array type and it's simply going to be a data that we want to insert to this table uh, we are going to start with the sql variable which is going to store this uh, sql uh, statement for the insert uh, let's start with insert into and then in between uh, uh, backticks and double uh, and curly brackets you don't have to use them again table and then we are going to use brackets and in between the brackets we are going to wrap each uh, field of the database with these backticks and again this is entirely up to you you don't have to use these backticks i just tend to use them same as this curly bracket so your statement could may as well be something like this without these backticks but i do like to use them so that's my personal preference okay now within these brackets here I need to split the statement because what I'm going to do is uh, so double quote to make sure that I'm closing this uh, first part of the statement semicolon then we are going to concatenate it so SQL full stop equals double quote this is going to be later after the statement and then SQL concatenating here I'm going to implode using the implode function um, we are going to implode using these backticks and then comma in between and I'm going to show you what the example of what we are going to achieve by doing so. Uh, and then array underscore keys. And we pass data through. And now what's going to happen here? Uh, we are going to start, I'm just going to type an example statement. Uh, the statement will be something like this. Insert into and then say table books. Uh, and we start with the brackets. And this implode what we'll do with each item of this array and obviously we are looking for the keys so if we go into pass the array let's say name equals uh, something then we are going using this array keys that will return array of only the keys of this given array so let's say books uh, name field uh, author and so on so this is what we're going to do uh, to basically achieve by using this insert into then all these backticks obviously and then within the brackets this closing here and using this implode method as you can see this implode will simply create the closing uh, backtick uh, comma and then opening backtick for the next item of the array and then at the end we will have to close obviously the last one as well with a backtick and uh, close bracket so this is uh, this part of the statement and then actually rather than just finishing it here we need to add values and then within the brackets now without the backticks uh, because we are going to be basically passing through uh, placeholders and i'm just going to concatenate it here again close this bracket and this is going to be the end of the statement but before we close the statement sql again concatenating with implode again we are going to be concatenating these things with just comma this time and the thing we are going to be concatenating will be question marks basically placeholders for the prepared statement and this time what i'm going to do is to use array underscore fill and what i want to do is to start with index zero the number of items that i want to use is going to be uh, count data because this tells us how many items we are passing through and then what i want to fill this array with is the question mark it's basically placeholder for our values uh, to be associated with the keys of this array so that's what i want to do so basically this part uh, if i just again type after this uh, method it will do give us values and in between a bracket question mark question mark question mark and so on depending on how many items we are passing through uh, using this this array argument here this this data argument okay so that's our sql statement now we're going to check if uh lowercase perhaps and then exclamation mark this execute sql which we have just prepared and then we are going to pass through as a second argument array values from this data array argument so this time rather than uh, 
uh, as uh, rather than keys, which we, which is what we did here, we are passing the values of this array. So basically, again, let's just just to illustrate it. If we pass the array of let's say uh, name something, and then let's just scroll up a little bit, title something else then obviously here array keys is going to give us name and title array values will return something something else so the array of these uh, of these items okay so now we're checking if uh, uh, the statement did not execute uh, successfully basically so if this execute method uh, returned false then we simply return false but if it returned true then what I want to do first before I actually return, because we obviously could just return the statement, this, this return execute. But what I want to do is if it's successful that I want to do this last insert underscore ID insert, there we go, ID equals this PDO last insert ID. It will give us the ID of the last record that has been added to the database. So we can later on play with this record if we need to. And then we return true. So once we've got all this, we return true. Now we need to create this uh, property. So let's copy the name of it, scroll right to the top. And after this default options, if we create another protected property, last insert ID. And by default, let's set it to null. And we are going to add some dog blocks here. Default null, but it will uh, return integer otherwise. Okay, if we scroll down, uh, now that we have this property, obviously we need to be able to access it outside of this uh, class or the class or any class obviously that extends it because obviously from directly from this one we won't be able because it's an abstract class. So let's create another method. But before I do this, let's quickly add doc blocks here as well. And some description, add new record to the database. There we go. Okay, so after this insert method, what I'm going to do is create another one public function last insert ID. And this one will simply return this last insert ID. We just don't want anyone to, to mess with this uh, property. That's why I made it protected uh, and just give uh, the getter method basically so we can ob obtain it, but we can't overwrite it. Okay, so now uh, let's again add doc blocks and it returns the integer or null. And description will be get last insert ID. There we go. If we now try and run the test, so let's open the terminal PHP units. And what we get is an error because no such table books exist. And this is because obviously we haven't done any migration, nothing. So this is a good time for us to start using this migration component, which came with the exercise files. What we need to do if we go back to the database test after the uh, instantiation of the database object here inside of the setup method, what we are going to do is to, uh, in between the, the two brackets, because we're not going to be associating this with any variable and property, we are going to call new migration manager. And this migration manager take takes a, another argument, new migration, modern migration, there we go. This one takes the instance of the database. And what we want to do is to call the method up on this instance, basically on this instance of the whatever migration manager is going to return. I'm going to import all these classes here. So if we just import it all, there we go. So now you can see they are all listed right here. Okay, if we save it, go back to our terminal and now run PHP unit. As you can see, we have three tests, three assertions, which pass because everything is green. So if we go back to our a database test we have this execute simple query inserts new record and then the other third test is inside of our database manager test which is returns new database instance all three tests and assertions uh, pass if i was to change this to assert false for instance there we go then that should fail if we now run php unit and it does tell us uh, the insert statement felt felt asserting that true is false so obviously if we go back to true, which is what it should be, we go back to green and okay. So let's clear this. Now let's quickly have a look at this um, 
migration here, migration manager. If we open this migration manager, and the first thing you notice is that it has two properties. First one is the migration, which represents the argument. If we scroll down to the constructor, you'll see this migration, which we're passing through as an argument, is then associated with this property. And then we have a list of tables, uh, the second private per property, which is basically listing all of the tables that we want to have with our database. And now if we open model and queries, and then whichever uh, basically driver you want to use, you'll see that these reflect what we have in these uh, directories. Now, if we scroll down, obviously here we are associating the construct, within the constructor, we're associating what's been passed through as an argument. And then app method, basically, first of all, what we do is disable foreign key checks. Let's quickly check what this method does. This method calls the DB method on the migration. If we open this migration file, you'll see that the DB method simply returns the database instance. And if we go back to our database test, as you can see, database instance is what we pass through as an argument to this migration uh, call here. So the constructor associates the database instance with the database uh, property of this migration class. So we return in the instance of this uh, database here, and we check in if this DB, basically this database instance, is of MySQL, which would match the one from within the database driver, and then this MySQL, because only MySQL on MySQL we can run this statement set old foreign uh, key checks, foreign key checks, and then set them to null. Basically, don't check for foreign keys. Uh, when we are running the following queries and then disable sorry this is the <laughs> disable uh, foreign key checks uh, obviously and then uh, enable them back basically puts them back into place this is what what this gives us is basically when we create in databases which have any foreign key uh, foreign keys relationships basically between the tables sometimes you might run into the uh, basically problems when you run the, the the basically the queries in in the incorrect order basically if one table uh, is uh, trying to uh, set the, uh, the relationship while the table to which it creates the relationship does not exist yet. So that could co uh, cause basically some problems. That's why we disable these foreign key checks first. And then after we run this, uh, it, whatever we wanted to run with this for each within this for each loop, then we enable them back. And basically, what we're doing here, we're running through this uh, through the records, uh, basically through these entries of the tables uh, property, this array, and we create these tables. If we go to this migration create method, you can see it takes the file with a table name, it's query path method basically prepends the type of the database. So we check what uh, database type uh, we are uh, trying to run it on. And then basically it's going to be the SQLite on my SQL and then fetches the correct file basically with the extension .php. Uh, so if we go back to this DB uh, app uh, and obviously that creates a table and then down method does exactly the same, but in the opposite way. So first of all, we reverse in the, the order of the tables. So they're going to be, rather than having them from authors to book locations, it's going to run from book locations to authors. And what it's going to do is basically destroy them, remove the table. So after the, uh, we've run this down, it none of the tables is going to exist, uh, obviously, on the database. So now having this down method, it's probably a good idea to actually use it within our test. So we have set up, and now the next method we're going to be working with is going to be called tier down, protected function tier down, which is one of the methods on the PHP, if we go back, test case, uh, PHP unit framework test case, and let's look for PHP, uh, sorry, not PHP, tier, down there we go you can see tears down the fixture for example close a network connection this method is called after a test is executed so setup is run before test is executed tear down is when the test has completed uh, so uh, from within the tear down what i want to do is first of all run the parent one tier parent tier down uh, if we have any obviously as you saw uh, just a moment ago the tier down within this php unit test case was empty but if we wanted to add one for all of the tests we could do it from within the test case and then that would apply to all of our tests so let's just uh, basically uh, create a call to this method and then what we're going to do again um, rather actually than typing this again let's just copy this entire line here this migration manager with migration and rather than up let's call down method so after each test 
all database tables will be removed and then before the next one they will be recreated and so on. So every time we're going to run the test from within this database test uh, class here uh, we always go in to start with a fresh uh, migration with the fresh empty tables basically. In, in this case obviously we don't uh, work with the data from the previous test we always have a fresh fresh tables and so on. Okay uh, let's run the test once again just to make sure everything works PHP unit hit return and all tests pass and we can now move to the next video.